I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. The ride to work was a rough one this morning for many who use Interstate 84 and Route 17 through the town of Wallkill. A tractor-trailer rig from Brim Recyclers of Cutabackville went out of control and overturned as it was rounding the entrance ramp curve from Route 17, spilling its load of plastic piping over the roadway and median. The accident forced the closing of I-84 eastbound with traffic diverted onto Route 17. Serious traffic backups resulted on 84 and that section of Route 17 for several hours this morning. The truck driver, 59-year-old William Larkin of Middletown, was treated for minor injuries at Orange Regional Medical Center. The impacted traffic lanes were reopened late in the morning once the truck was righted and the material spill was cleaned up. To this point, state police say no tickets have been issued. Extinguishing the flames turned out not to be the top priority for firemen responding to a blaze in a three-family residence in the city of Beacon last night. When firemen responded to the two-story house at 43 Ackerman Street, they discovered three people trapped on the second floor. A man, his elderly mother, and a home health aide were rescued from a second-floor window. The man was being treated at St. Francis Hospital in Poughkeepsie. The woman and home health aide were helicoptered out to Westchester Medical Center, where one was in critical condition and the other in stable condition, with undisclosed injuries. The cause of the fire had not yet been determined, but investigators say it began on the front porch and spread from there. A guilty plea today in a Middletown fatal shooting case. Middletown resident Brandon Rosado pleaded guilty to a charge of first-degree manslaughter in Orange County Court for the shooting death of 19-year-old Otis Singleton of Mount Vernon, a former Orange County resident who was in Middletown to celebrate his birthday with friends when he was killed. Police say Rosado opened fire on the car Singleton was sitting in on Broad Street with his friend Peter Irons, wounding Irons and fatally injuring Singleton. As part of the plea arrangement, Rosado will serve 16 years in prison. No motive was revealed for the shooting. Singleton's family says uh, the 16-year sentence isn't enough of a punishment. Calling it the largest single takedown in the history of the state's organized crime task force, State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman today announced the arrests of 52 members of a violent narcotics network who are accused of distributing what were said to be massive quantities of cocaine, heroin, and illegal prescriptions up and down the Hudson Valley. The operation targeted a street gang that undercover officers learned about through authorized wiretaps. Police moved in after a main subject in the investigation was murdered on the streets of Albany. Five of those arrested are from our region. They were identified as 27-year-old Gaston Avendano Nilo of Allenville, 30-year-old Justin Laurel of Awarsing, 26-year-old Ashanti Harris of Newburgh, 40-year-old Charles Guadalupe of Kerhongson, and 42-year-old Charles Faust of Saugerties. The operators of the Indian Point power plants will be paying a hefty fine for violations to the Federal Clean Air Act that involved a major oil spill into the Hudson River two years ago. As part of a consent agreement announced today, Entergy Nuclear will pay a fine totaling $1.2 million and also uh, agree to upgrade systems to prevent future contamination spills into the river. The spill of more than 10,000 gallons of oil into discharge canals that then empty into the Hudson was the result of a transformer fire at the nuclear plant back in 2010. A popular athletic team sport at Newburgh Free Academy is on the budgetary chopping block, but supporters of the NFA crew program hope to convince members of the Newburgh School Board to reverse course and restore $46,000 in next year's budget to save the 23-year-old program. This year, 75 high school boys and girls are members of NFA crew teams. Their head coach, Ed Kennedy, said the board's decision to eliminate crew took him and many others by surprise. He still hopes the budget-cutting pain will be shared. I never thought that something like this would happen. And uh, it really is shocking that something they would ask to cut this program. Especially when it, you know, it, it affects so many kids here. I would, I would think that there's some sort of fair way that there's some could cut across the board or something like that. But to just, you know, just say goodbye like that, really kind of shocking. I mean, even this program could cut back tremendously and still 
be there next year. Members of NFA crew teams fundraise to help cover expenses and help make improvements to the boathouse. For those involved, the loss of crew would leave a void. I was really upset. As a senior, I a lot of people said to me, like, well, it doesn't directly affect you, but it does. And even when I go away next year, I'm going to still be involved down here at the boathouse. My brother's on the team. And uh, this being down here and being on this team has changed my life so much that I couldn't imagine it not being here for anyone else who wanted to try it. The Newburgh School Board will hold another budget work session on Thursday. Members of the program will make a presentation then in hopes of keeping that program afloat. And how many people can lay claim to the feat of having their face appear on a cereal box. But that's what happened to Serena Christensen of Bloomingburg and Katie Lamontanaro of Waldkill. The ladies are employees at ShopRite in the town of Waldkill, and they were chosen to appear on a special edition Cheerios box in recognition of their store's winning efforts in ShopRite Partners in Caring Fight Against Hunger program. Walkill was uh, one of 45 uh, ShopRite stores that led the way in the raising of a million dollars to fight hunger in their local communities. For Katie and Serena, learning they'd be on a Cheerios box produced a variety of emotions. Kind of scared and nervous, but fantastic. <laughs> First, I told my son, my son has have the best ball with it. He's brought it to school in Pine Bush, and he's like, Mom's a celebrity, so it's been really fun. I actually cried. Yeah, I, I really cried. I mean, I was in the kitchen when they called me, and they said, Katie, we pulled your name, and I said, no, you didn't, you're lying. And then he'll vouch for me I was crying, because that's what I do. I'm a very emotional person, so I cried. I thought that was really a great thing to be a part of this. My family lives in Georgia and I'm going down for spring break with my children and my they obviously they're not distributed there's no shop rights in Georgia so we're bringing quite a few boxes to show my sisters that I really am on that Cheerio box. <laughs> shop right associates and their customers raised the money over several weeks about 200,000 special edition Cheerios boxes are being sold exclusively at shop right stores during the month of March. Clouds and the threat of rain will dominate our weather over the next couple of days. Wednesday will be mostly cloudy with showers expected to arrive late in the day. The highs will reach the upper 50s. A mix of sun and clouds in the forecast for Thursday. With a chance of a passing shower, temperatures will top out in the middle 50s. Keep checking back here at Record Online to stay on top of uh, local news when it breaks and get a full report on all the day's developments in tomorrow's Times Herald Record. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.